day, we see students smile, laugh, and simply seem happy. That's how students are supposed to be, right? But behind, but behind a smile lies the truth, because tears, they tell stories too. This quote isn't as complex to understand, but it's the significance behind it that matters. The thought that maybe the people that we see every day, the people that we talk to, aren't really who they seem to be. As a student from Bond International School, I have met many different people, with different personalities, different cultural backgrounds, different nationalities, and they all had different stories. Most of these stories revolved around bullying. We all know one victim of bullying, whether it be a friend, a family member, a coworker, a student, we all know one. But today, I want to focus on the bully's perspective. My two key questions, which I'd hope to have answered by the end of this presentation is, what makes someone a bully and how are they formed? And how can we inspire students to be internationally open-minded and inspire them to reduce the bullying? Let me start by defining bullying. Bullying can be defined as the aggressive behavior towards another person which makes them feel unwanted in a way. This is done by the power imbalance, so power inequality, because the bully has more social power than the victim. There are three perspectives in a bullying event, the victim, the bully, and the bystander. I'll be focusing on cultural bullying, which is any bullying actions done toward, a cult toward another person's cultural background. So, how are bullies formed? What makes someone a bully? Let's take this from a bully's perspective. Bullies are formed generally through social issues. This could be that they have been bullied before and have experienced as being the victim and feeling weak, or they come home to parents or any siblings or family members who are abusive towards them. Abusive could mean that they hurt them violently, either through emotion, emotionally or physically. Let's put you in this position. Imagine you come home to parents who physically hurt you, and then you have a sibling who emotionally hurts you as well. You feel weak at home, you have no power, and to gain that power, you go to school. At school, there's this child who's younger than you, no social power, and you just have so much power, and you use this power to just bring them down. And that's the what bullies do, because they feel weak, and to get back that power, they show it at school. Bullies also generally can't control their emotions. They have a hard time building up, building up their anger and just getting help for it. Instead, they build up their anger and show it on that one victim, they can't get help because who's there to go to help for? Their parents, who are just violently shouting words at them, just hurting them, or their teachers. But will a teacher really recognize this bullying happening? Will they actually see it happening? Will it be happening in a classroom? These are, these are questions which we ask ourselves, and we just don't know. There's no one to help them, and to help them, they need a friend. But who can they trust when they feel so weak? So, am I saying that we can put an end to bullying? Can we stop this? No, we can't. And why? Because bullying is part of human nature. Humans are humans, and we, we are both good and bad. Bullies are pushed towards the bad side because there's so much pressure on them. Their parents, and they're just feeling weak, and they're just pushed towards that side. However, we can make choices in life, choices which define on which side we lean towards. And that's what really matters. So can we get bullies out of this bullying event? Yes, we can, we can help them. We can inspire students to be internationally open-minded and help them from a young age. How do we do this? Well, I have three suggestions. One, we get role models. Role models can be students, like coworkers, family members, and even celebrities. But make sure you choose the right ones for that. What do they do? They inspire us. And how do we get inspired? We get inspired by so many things. We get inspired by photography. We get inspired by the arts, such as music, theater, drawing, anything that inspires us, anything that makes us reflect upon ourselves. My inspiration is Demi Lovato. Demi Lovato went through a lot of bullying as a child, and as soon as she became famous, all her Twitter fans, all her Facebook fans turned against her. They said she was worthless, that she didn't deserve to be famous, that she was fat. They called her so many ugly things, and even through all of this, she stayed strong, and she's still here, which I find is truly inspirational. Similarly, we can all be role models. We can all show our strength to others, and we can show them how to be 
someone respectful. Instead of telling bullies to stop bullying, we can show them what they should be instead. This leads to experience. Experience can be any past events which makes us who we are today. This could be that you have been in a bullying event as a bully, as a victim, as a bystander. Anything which makes us reflect upon ourselves. When I was in primary school, I had a really close friend of mine. We were really good friends, and that year, this new girl came into our class. The new girl came, was different from us. She was younger, she came from a different background, and that was basically the perfect victim. Now, my friend, she unfortunately decided to verbally bully this girl, and this went on for a year until I realized I had to do something. If, this, if I was put in this situation again, tomorrow, today, on Monday, I would obviously stand up for this new girl, but at that time, I was just confused. What do I do? Do I stand up for my friend that I've known for ages, that I had this whole friendship with, or this new girl that was so helpless, helpless and innocent? It took a lot of courage to do this, but I did stand up for a new girl, and as soon as I did, it just felt as if it was the best thing that I ever did in my life. I just felt free and like, for once, I could speak up for something that I wanted, and it really did help the new girl, because as soon as I told my friend that, she had what, that what she was doing was wrong, she stopped bullying. She was mad at me. Yes, that's what happens, and we didn't talk for many weeks, but in that time, I became really good friends with this new girl, and my friend did come back to apologize to me, and I told her that she doesn't have to apologize to me. She has to apologize to the, new, to the girl that she bullied. So she did, and as soon as she did, I felt as if I built this foundation for this friendship that they had that grew and grew. Unfortunately, in that same year, my friend left, but this new girl, I'm proud to say, to this day is still a really close friend of mine. And it's a choice that I made to stand up for her that, that gave us this friendship. If I hadn't stood up for her at that time, I doubt she wanted to be friends with me today. So, this leads to school. In school, we learn many things, whether it be in classes, in lessons, anything. But we learn a lot of things also in break, in lunch times, and after school. We learn so much from each other. In Bond International School, we have many different cultural backgrounds, different nationalities, and different experiences that we all share to each other. We tell each other about our hometowns, about where we have lived before. And that's something that we should really be happy to and privileged that we are able to do this. In contrast, I have a friend who used to be in Bond International School. Now she's gone, she's not in Europe anymore. And in her school, she says it's also an international school. But everybody there are locals. They're all locals. And whenever they're learning about Europe or America, they learn it in class, because no one has not much experience to share there. And I don't think we all realize how privileged we are that we are able to share this multicultural environment. So, relating back to the start of my speech about bullying as a whole, I made a website. As seen on the screen, it's called www.smallreasonstosmile.webs.com. And basically, I made this website for anybody who was bullied, who was being bullied, was a bully, was a bystander for a bullying event, anybody who has any advice to give, any experience to share. It also has some, it also has some details about my newest project called Smile A Day, which will be put into action by June, hopefully. And Smile A Day is made to, to just share smiles with someone. We all deserve to smile, and I don't think, and especially in these days, there's so much bullying going on, and not everybody's smiling, and we all deserve to smile. So hopefully we'll all be able to share a smile in this. This the small deeds that actually count, and we don't realize what we're doing, but it's the small things that makes people smile that actually a blessing in life. We're all humans, and we can inspire, we can make a change, and it all depends on our choices. Thank you.